Welcome everyone. Uh, how many of you have heard of RoboHelp? Okay, quite a few. Good. Uh, even if you have not heard of RoboHelp, there is a quite a bit of generic stuff, so I think uh, you'll be able to get something out of this session. Uh, RoboHelp 2019 release, that is the latest release, and it was released last year in uh, October, and uh, no, sorry, in August. Sorry. And uh, in September, uh, here at the same session, I was presenting about uh, Rubohan 2019. Uh, since then, I just have added continuous journey because that is how literally it has been. Uh, because the product has been uh, evolving uh, on a daily basis. A uh, bit about myself. So, I'm the director of products for uh, Tickcom Business at Adobe. And uh, my responsibility other than sales are pretty much everything, product strategy, roadmap, implementation. So, I manage all the functions for Tickcom Business. And uh, this is the portfolio. Uh, and mostly all these products we will talk about today if we have not uh, talk already, so FrameMaker, FrameMaker Publishing Server, uh, that is from the FrameMaker family, then RoboHelp, RoboHelp Server, and then Adobe Technical Communication Suite we have, PCS, uh, so that includes FrameMaker, RoboHelp, and there are three other products, Captivate, Presenter, and uh, Acrobat. And then we have a product which is has the longest name in Adobe, uh, excellent documentation for Adobe Experience Manager. And that is a bit of history why uh, that name came about. So uh, that is not a standalone product in itself, right? So that works along with AEM. And then when we were deciding the name, uh, it was like decided that okay, AEM should be there in the name. So once and AEM is an acronym in Adobe, formally you can't use AEM. It has to be a full name Adobe Experience Manager. So once that was given, we didn't have much choice what else to add. So for AEM was there, so we just added XML documentation for AEM and then we keep debating what uh, new name to have and people use different names. So in the last session probably you heard <laughs> three, four different names. Docs. <laughs> By the way, if you're tweeting out at Adobe TCS, the team in India is actually watching, keeping on top and retweeting that kind of information. So if there's information in the presentation at Adobe TCS, tag them as well. and. Uh, Definitely, you know, try to be involved on it because it helps us get interest and awareness and we'll go back again next year. Thank you. So, uh, let me quickly cover uh, those two server products as well. So, FrameMaker, FrameMaker Publishing Server, are you aware of what this is? So, this does a publishing job in an automated fashion, right? So, FrameMaker by license, you can't work that in an uh, automated fashion when nobody is watching, nobody is uh, interacting with it, right? So for that, a publishing server needs to be purchased. So if you have a large volume of uh, publications to do and you do it overnight, then it is the framework of publishing server which needs to be uh, used. Uh, RoboHelp I'll uh, talk about now, but RoboHelp uh, server is a hosting solution. So if you have a corporate internet, you uh, generate content from RoboHelp and host it on RoboHelp server and it does uh, analytics and few other functions automatically. So for example, if you have HR and some other function and in HR also you have some uh, person which is an administrator, you want some certain guide for them, uh, not for others. So you can have a, a restricted access to uh, those things very easily in RoboHelp uh, server. So that is what it does. Uh, it comes with just a collection of products uh, which we have. Okay, uh, so this was my slide from last year as well when I presented uh, about RoboHelp 2019. And uh, some of you, those who have heard of RoboHelp uh, 2019, is a completely new application. It's a version 1.0. We uh, rewrote the complete application, and uh, I would say this is about 25 year old product. But 2019 is brand new, it's just about one year old. So what I mentioned was it's a modern technology, uh, high resolution support because that was a problem in the other one. It's multilingual, same product works in all languages, uh, enables rapid innovation, right? So that is the point I want to stress on. The new platform allows us to very rapidly innovate uh, on the product. 
and this is the example of that. So last one year since September we have had eight updates and all the updates are quite meaty. It's not that we have just dub bug fixes. All of them carried features. Last one came out on September 11. Uh, if I average that out, then it is like 1.5 months uh, of every release is coming out in 1.5 months. Right? And, and that is what gives us the continuous innovation uh, on the product. So having said that and shown that, like what next? We kept debating like what is the next thing we should pick up and what are the next challenges or the next uh, trend which is there in the market and which people are dealing with, right? So we looked at few trends and let me show you some of them. So uh, this is how Google search works these days. So if you search, it directly gives you the result, isn't it? So this slide I had prepared uh, in Montreal and then uh, I had written that where is Montreal located uh, and then it did not give me a link to the sites only which comes at the bottom anyway, it gave me the map and it tells me okay this is a Montreal located, it gave me few more Montreal and Quebec and, and, and so much of information, right? This is how Google gives you the result these days, isn't it? What is that called? That is called featured snippet, right? So, our Google snippet, what Google shows you. So, here, uh, so I, I search what is featured snippet. So here, this is the ad, but this is what it is giving me summary. And Google is not writing out the code. What Google is doing is it picks up from the website, which it finds most relevant, right? And then within that web page, it finds out the context which it thinks is most relevant to the, what you are searching for. Right? So much of algorithm is running behind to give you the exact content. But it's not Google's content. It is your content. Right? It's just a Google's algorithm is running and then it is showing you that uh, answer. So Google doesn't stop there. What it does is, it gives you a few more things people also ask. Right? Nowadays it gives you a set of questions, whatever you have asked or searched, it keeps uh, giving you. And if you click here, right, then apparently you click one or two questions, then it doesn't stop there. It gives you a few more questions, isn't it? Right? And if you keep clicking, then it will give you a few more. It is learning on the fly. What is it doing? It is learning what questions you asked, right? It finds the relevance and then it gives you a few more relevant questions related to that. And so that is how the world is moving and most of you probably and, and me included, we hardly now go to the pages, web page, you open that and then see what is written and then find your exact information where in that particular page what you are looking for is there. Right? So people are getting spoiled by this. Even for, uh, let's say, any uh, match is going on, tennis, oh, who is winning, what is the score, live match, it just tells you straight away, gives you the result. You don't have to go to website to look at that result, it just gives you right there and there. Right? So this is a big trend shift, shift in the market. People are looking at the information, what they are looking for, they want to get it right there. Right? They don't want to read the web page. They don't want to go through the information to look for what is there. Right? If people don't find it, what do you do? They search the query so that it comes up right at the top. You don't go and look for it in the pages. You change the search query. Okay. Another trend. Any idea what this icon is, which product? TikTok. 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 Yeah. So the younger generation they know. <laughs> it's a, it's a TikTok, TikTok. You know what that is? Which is it's a mobile app, it's a web platform. And it helps you create your show with your talent basically. Either some comedy, some music video and all those things you can create. But you can say, oh, all those things are on YouTube as well. How is this different? The unique thing about this is you can create a maximum of 
15 seconds of video. So it is for 3 seconds to 15 seconds and that's about it. It's hugely popular. And especially where I come from in India, it's very, very popular. <laughs> I'm just talking about the shift, right? The attention span, what people are looking for is much short, shorter. They don't want to go through the whole thing, right? And that is what is catching up. It's very, very popular. So it's exactly 15 seconds of video, 3 to 15 seconds you can create, not longer than that. This is some of the other ones, which is probably more known. And Twitter, very, very popular. What do you do? It's a very small, 140 characters was there. Now it's 280 characters. That is what kind of you can write over there. But still, it's, it's a meaningful information people share and it's very popular. Facebook, you write a little longer. And blog is where you have leisurely written everything, full concept and from introduction to conclusion, which is like complete in itself, right? And then you read it also. <coughs> so what I'm saying is, it's not that shifting from here to there. That is a new trend, right? And all have their own markets, right? It's not that people use just this or that or that. That is a new one which has a new category and which is kind of becoming meaty more and more. Right? But it's not that people are not reading blogs or not writing blogs, they are doing that as well, of course, Facebook posts. Right? But there is a shift in that and all, all are required and necessary. So what is this doing? So uh, you can see that and there are various studies that you would also have read how the tablet and mobile and all those things are making people have a lesser and lesser attention span. So it is reducing the attention span for everybody, right from the childhood, right? And people are becoming more impatient. They want everything quick, right then and there. Okay? So let's get that into a tech comp space. Whatever I was just trying to build on some trend, what the shift in the market is, let's get that to take on space, right? Earlier it was like book, 500 page, uh, Marco mentioned that that used to be written, but he's just trying to break that up into a smaller chunk of information, not just for writing, but for consumption as well, right? So then it moved to chapter, you create a, a write content in chapters, and then you assemble that in a book, and then you do a publication. Then we said, okay, no chapter is also too long. Write that into a topic, which is a smaller set of information, and then collate that in a map or TOC and do the publication. Right? That helps in content reuse as well. But people started writing this shorter amount of content because that is how the consumption was. People were not ready to go through the entire guide. They were looking for search or somewhere in the within a TOC navigate and get to the right result. Right? Now, what next? Any guesses? Sentence. Pardon? Sentence. <laughs> Sentence, yeah. In some ways you are right. Micro content. Right? So the micro content, you will start hearing more and more of this particular term. That content is becoming micro. Right? And, and this was coined by Jacob Nielsen, so I did a uh, Google uh, and then this is what showed up. And he originally referred to micro content as a small group of word that can be skimmed by a person to get a clear idea of the content on the web page. Right? So that is how he probably a summary and other thing. What's but if, yeah? What should be different between that and <coughs> metadata? Okay, so uh, as I give you more examples, then it will become clear. But metadata one is one example of micro content. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is some more, right? Any infographic, any short video clip, images, illustrations, all these are examples of micro content. Right? There is no set definition that this is a micro content, uh, but he mentioned a sentence, which is right. This thing. So Toronto is in Ontario. This is a micro content. It has one sentence which is meaningful, which is conveying some information which you can use at various places. 
which is the perfect example of a microcontent. But this is not a topic in itself, this is not a, a, a longer form information in itself, but it is a meaningful information. It can be used. Okay? Now, how do you use it? If let's say micro content is there in a technical communication space, how do you use micro content? Is there any use? Okay. Okay. So, chatbot is one. <laughs> we, we didn't discuss before, so. <laughs> okay, any other example you can think of? Pardon? Help text. Okay, I have it below. But, <laughs> yes, definitely. When you're searching for content, you want to get some more context. So when it's like microcontent, like you have short descriptions included, that Featured yeah. snippet. I gave the example of Google, right? So in a search, you want that to show up as a microcontent, the right result, right? Any other guesses or ideas? Uh, traffic light. Yeah? A traffic light is microcontent, right? Traffic. traffic light. Okay. How do you use it? Yeah. It says green is go or red is stop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what I was asking is how do you use it? That is the micro content, I agree. Right? How do you use it in, in, in the context of technical communication? Right? FAQ. You, once you create a FAQ, those are all micro content. They are not topic in itself. Uh, another question might not be related to the previous one, uh, but they are uh, fully self-sufficient information, right? If the question the people are asking something, you get that answer for that. Then within the context, uh, you can have a tooltip that is also a micro content, right? For how to help you mentioned, so that can pop up as a micro content. Uh, within AR, VR, augmented reality, if you are looking at some building, some information about that pops up. So that is also in context information. So a lot of, in within context, you can use uh, this micro content. And then you can have a link to go to a full content. If the people want to, they can do that. Right? So they can, be, this is some of the examples, right? So it doesn't stop here. Uh, but this is definitely a trend. That is what I want to talk about. And then Okay, so I'll go deeper into chatbots uh, because out of all the channels, chatbot and search and some of the other things are becoming more meaningful in today's world. More and more bots you will start saying. So I'll go deeper. How does the bot work and then how we can kind of, uh, from RoboHelp, you can create that. I'll show that. Uh, but uh, there are other channels uh, as well. So, the, when you get into a chatbot, the way you write content, the way you author content is a big paradigm shift. You are no longer writing a topic. You write as a phrase and response. And then various intents, so alternate phrases. So, for example, if the user is saying, how do I do this, right? And then you give a response, you create that response. But user can ask in a variety of ways. Right? Not just what you are saying. And that is what you have to think. You have to come up with all the varieties of ways and do all, collate all those intents. So it's no longer writing skill. It's a very different kind of skill which is required to author content for chatbots. Right? You have to think of a phrase. What all things would be coming? For example, if, if, if right? And then it is not that user is consuming FAQ by looking at everything. User is asking question and chatbot is responding. So user can ask question in a variety of ways and you have to think and help who? Help the chatbot engines. So there are engines which is like kind of whatever you have written 
go and gets processed in that particular engine. And what does that engine do? Mostly it applies NLP, right? Natural language processing is very, very critical in chatbot because the user is conversing, is asking questions, so the bot has to understand how can I do this or what does this mean, right? So it has to understand what the user is asking, how, what, when, those kind of uh, things the bot has to understand. So a lot of NLP comes into the picture. Then AI and ML, one example was like Google was doing it. When you say people also ask, you click on something, it was quickly using that learning algorithm and it has a different set of kind of questions which it thinks based on what you did. Right? So it is learning, it is a self-learning and then it is building on top of that. So that is where AI ML come into the picture, where the machine is becoming intelligent, but machine doesn't become intelligent on its own. You have to give a corpus of content for it to become intelligent. For example, for machine to learn that any picture, this is a cat, machine did not learn itself. You had to feed in thousands of cat images and tell machine all these are cats. <laughs> right? And then machine started inferring that okay, yeah, this is also probably cat, it matches, and that also it says, okay, I am 80% certain that this is a cat. You have to give enough corpus of content or in, uh, alternate intent for machine to become intelligent. So, uh, I think in some of the chatbot engines, they require 10 phrases, 10 alternate phrases for it to become those algorithms to kick in. Otherwise, it just says, okay, whatever is the exact match, it will give you the result. <coughs> then, chatbot does all the processes, and then it is not the front end. Then, you have a chatbot front end, which is interacting with the end users. Can you give me an example of very, very popular front-end? Many of you will be having at home. Robots? Well, well, Alexa. Alexa. Right? Alexa is a chatbot front-end. You ask question, Alexa has a connection to the server, which is the Amazon server. It goes there, gets processed, it gets the answer and it tells you, right? So that is a chatbot front-end. There can be many chatbot frontends, but Alexa is a chatbot client. Works as a frontend for. So there are many chatbot engines. So Google Dialogflow, Chatfuel, Minijat, uh, IBM Watson, Amazon Lex, Microsoft Bot Framework, and so on. They are open source as well, right? So if the company, any company has uh, a security concern, so they can uh, get an open source version of. Uh, chatbot, get it uh, locally installed within the uh, uh, internet and then it can work that way as well. Okay. Then there are a lot of chatbot frontends. So Amazon Alexa, Sky, Twitter, Facebook, chatbot can in get integrated anywhere. Right? Telegram, Line, all these social media channels but they all can work as your chatbot frontends. And, and they can be more. Any questions so far? Okay, all right, we can move on. So, micro content is a all new way of authoring and publishing. So, both are uh, a completely new way or it's a new paradigm you have to get into. And that is what I will show you. So, early sneak peek in uh, RoboHelp uh, how you can author content, how you can publish it how a chatbot can fit in and how does it look and how does it work. So what I will show you is from RoboHelp, the authoring happens, right? Then uh, we are using Google Dialogflow right now uh, as a chatbot engine and then uh, RoboHelp generates a frameless web output. Uh, that is what will work as the front end, right? So this is what I will show you uh, for chatbot. And as I mentioned, Google Dialogflow is one of the engines in terms of any other engine as well. Can be open source. 
Okay. So this is uh, new robo help. And I have already a project open. And that project uh, is the robo help uh, reimagined which will uh, ship as a sample. And on the left hand side, you will see all the various things you can author. Right? And there are two tabs on the author. <coughs> so while authoring, it shows you this. And whatever you click, uh, the panel uh, on the right opens up for authoring. And then you author, and then it flow is from left to right. right? So we have added a micro content tab here. You can see that micro content. If I click on micro content, So, micro content group shows up over there. So, so I have authored few. Uh, so, we have provided a, a grouping mechanism so that you can manage all your intents better. Uh, but uh, it, it could happen with just one single file. Uh, so, all the intents are there. Uh, all the intents right now is related to robot and only insert image, insert video, topic list, and so on. And this is the small content which is authored, and then right inside is the properties of that particular. Right? So that is how the flow is. Now, if I want to add a, a more intent for that, so on the right hand side, if you see the intent properties come up, and then I mention that intent as a task concept reference. So those are all metadata. So a lot of metadata, as much you can associate, the better you <laughs> can. So uh, task is the type. There are like concept reference and other things we'll add there. So task concept reference, you see that? Then I have added New phrases, so basically alternate phrases of phrases is there, new phrase that is the button. And then few alternate phrases are there. So for example, if the user is saying how do I insert image, the your alternate phrases can be how the image add image or add graphic or add picture. All these are alternate phrases which you give that the chatbot engine will pick that up, right? So those are the examples. So for example, insert image we have here. Your Alternate phrases are the like, yeah, insert image, add image, add graphic, insert image, inner topic, all those things, whatever you think is relevant for your content, you add that as a uh, alternate intent, and then there are keywords. So keywords work uh, help in our search, right? So you add keywords and so on. And that's what it is. So once you uh, do that, uh, then we go to the publication side. So there are uh, various other information here, but what I want to show you is here. So I want to select a phrase, so authoring, and uh, there was one more grouping done. So I can uh, select all the groups which I want to use as the phrase file. Then uh, train chatbot. So now all these engines, now all the applications are integrated using API. Right? You must have heard of APIs. All the web services which are there, they interact with the API. And how do you interact with the API? How do you give your information that use my account? They're all done through the keys. So the client key and dev key is provided by you so that your account of Dialogflow, Google Dialogflow gets used. Right? So that needs to be provided and then it will be uh, kind of generated. Now, when the content is generated, this is how it looks like. So I'm not doing all those things to save time. So this is how the content looks like. Uh, uh, EOC tiles open up over at the top, and then this is the standard content, right? So you have your TOC content, and then uh, that is the mini TOC for that particular top. Now, where does the chatbot come into the picture? If I take you to the home page, there is a little icon sitting over here on the bottom right. Can you see that? Right. So that is the, the chatbot part. If I click on that, 
it opens up and then it fights. So it shows me, so there is an interactivity now. So I said insert image, it added, I can say add image, probably the same thing will show up. But if it is, it doesn't have the answers, it says that, sorry, I can't answer this. Right? All these are coming from a chatbot. You can train all those things like how the intro can be. It says, okay, hi, how can I help you? All those things, you can put that uh, as part of your content and it will start responding to that, right? So this is the chatbot part. Now, all your content which you are generating did not sit along with your help content. Now the chatbot widget which is there, that can be as part of your website, right? So you have not published your technical documentation anywhere other than chatbot and chatbot sits as an icon on your web page or your product page, whatever on the marketing page and then it kind of serves from there and you can do everything over there. So in terms of branding, look and feel and so on. So for example, if you see the icon there and this both are the same, uh, those icons and the styling and all those things that can be changed to look and match your corporate guidelines and so on, uh, but that can fit anywhere. How does it fit anywhere? What you need to do is copy this particular code, the embed code which is here. You embed this much code on your web page and you will get that widget and then from there it will start serving, right? So it's as simple as that. Uh, but uh, Robert has done the work behind the scene of creating the chatbot engine, talking to the server, uh, creating that widget and so on. But once that is there, all the JavaScript and APIs are all there, you just need to add this widget on your web page. Otherwise it can just work along with the main help output as well. Now let me quickly show you a search, same thing. I see insert image. Now here this particular thing is showing up as a search snippet as well. Your other links are below the topic, but at the top it is showing up as a your source. So here it uh, the uh, NLP was implemented properly, so here it says resource linking, it shows up as a micro content and then uh, rest of the links are below. Right? So this is an example how it can be used in the search. Uh, in our in product health also we have integrated, so for example, say, if I hover over here, it just gives me okay, it doesn't give me the right location, but I, I hope yeah, yeah. So as, as a, uh, a tool tip, it's implemented. So you, you can integrate that in your web application or in your other application, and then micro content can show up as a tool tip, and from there. If the user wants to go to the full content, uh, he has a way to go to the full content and then he can go to the full content. Right? So that is how you can link your micro content, show the right information, exact information what the user is looking for and then link to the full content. Right? Let me show you an example of FAQ as well, how the FAQ can automatically get generated. I have added this FAQ uh, topic, uh, sorry, micro content file, and then I published it. So once I publish it, this is how it looks like. So it's a normal page, and here I have a normal topic link, and if I click that, this is automatically generated. So this is generated automatically from whatever I was writing here. 
what is content panel, what is this, and, and so on. So from there, it just automatically got generated. User can read that, what is the contents panel, and so on. And you can, if let's say you have to create a FAQ page only, you can just author it, and then you can just generate FAQ page only and not the other pages, and so on. Okay, so that was example of, these are some of the examples. There are like variety of ways how micro content can uh, get used, but I will just show you some of the examples which is there out of the box. Uh, but there can be more and we will also be working on more. So this is all going to be part of update 10 which is going to be released uh, in November. <laughs> so this particular part what I am showing is not released yet. Uh, it will be uh, getting released in the future. Okay, I think I have covered most of the things what I wanted to. Uh, questions? Yeah? Where do you add an analytics time? What? Uh, analytics. Analytics. A good question. So, uh, a lot of other places people have doubt is how do I know what other intent to add, right? So, analytics is one good place which will help you what other intent to add. You can get the analytics from Google engine, sorry, the chatbot engine and it will tell you that this is what user is searching for and they are not finding the result. So when you get those analytics that these are the things we user is searching for and you can go and add to your intent, already intents, right? And then that will help user finding those information because the analytics is showing you what the user are looking for, which is there or which is not there, right? Both. So it will come from the Google dialog flow. The chatbot engines. The chatbot engines will give you the analytics because all request queries is going to them. They are processing it and serving the result back. So then we need to feed that back into Adobe Analytics before we try? Uh, Adobe Analytics doesn't play a role here. Okay. It, it, it is a chatbot engine which is now, there is no web content here. Right? So all micro content sitting in a chatbot engine and a user is interacting with that particular bot. Right? So there is no web page involved here that can sit uh, as I mentioned, in a Facebook page, on a, a Twitter page, on a, anywhere you can sit, on an Alexa, you can integrate whatever I have shown you, you can integrate that into Amazon bot and Alexa will start answering those questions. How do I insert image? Alexa will answer that. And so it can go anywhere. Yeah? I have uh, two questions. One would be, is the RoboHelp connected in any way with the AEM, with the content management? Uh, no. Because here it is authoring it in an HTML format, not in a data format. So AEM does primarily uh, data, whatever we showed you in the previous session, was uh, data content. And the second question is, uh, any of the other Adobe products used at this point the robot? Are there other like, products? Like the Adobe product, the flagship product like Photoshop, Illustrator, any of those used at this point RoboHelp or their, their RoboHelp is implemented on any other Adobe products? <laughs> So, uh, I think uh, the ad cloud, um, uh, they are using uh, RoboHelp, but this is like authoring content. So, Adobe uses a variety of tools. Some use uh, FrameMaker, some use AEM, some use their own homegrown tools, uh, some use RoboHelp as well. Uh, but uh, it's not that across the board, one particular solution is getting used. Thank you. Um, I see that you have a new question about the e-book publishing. What are the performance rates for e-books? So, uh, for e-book, uh, primarily EPUB, uh, which is supported, so then you can open that on a, your mobile phone or tablets. And then uh, we support Amazon's, uh, what is that format? Amazon's format as well. Mm -hmm. Keen. Uh, Mobi. Mobi and Kindle and format. Keen. Epub, is that Epub 2 or Epub 3? Epub 3. Epub 3. Yeah. So it's on top of existing content. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. How do you fit that into existing content, right? You may not want to write separate content for micro content, right? Google is also doing that. Google is extracting content from your existing web page and showing that as a micro content, right? You need not author that separately. 
what we don't have right now and we'll be adding is so when you are clicking on any particular micro content you need not write that you can go and point into an existing topic that this particular portion is my response for this micro content right? so it can extract from that topic you don't have to write it right? so that is not there but that is uh, I think more often than not a valid way of using it uh, pick up, let's say the steps are already there, how to perform a task. Why should you replicate that content for chatbot? You can just point that into existing topic and that work, that can work as a response. And that can come from data topic or that can come from HTML, that can come from anywhere. Right? So you can just mark a certain section in that content as a response for a, uh, to any uh, phrase and it will work. Yeah. So that would be your process. So if I have all my content for me, I'm not in the end of it, but as long as it's in some sort of content management system, I can. So how does that connector work in terms of being able to identify that snippet of micro content? So the, the or, authoring tool has to provide that, right? So whoever is kind of managing the micro content for you has to provide that. Here in this case, Robot is managing the micro content for you, right? So in within RoboHelp, you can go and point to that content uh, and then saying that this is my response. But let's say we take this solution to AEM as well and AEM is managing that content in data, it has to be implemented within AEM. Right now it is not there. Right? So the, whoever is managing your content has to provide that feature. Yeah? Right, where you talk about the phrase, the chatbot engine, and the chatbot front end. Yeah. Yes. Um, if it would be possible to link uh, Google Help to, say, Watson, and basically, uh, because Watson is a really powerful <coughs> bot, it's like the most powerful yeah. thing. So, so it, it is. is. It is. Yeah, so right now we don't have it. I, I just showed you, we are still uh, developing. So right now it is integrated with Google Dialog Flow. Right. Uh, but it can very easily integrate with any other. With Watson as well. Yes. If you integrate with Watson, then basically you can replicate Google search. Yes. Right. You don't need to go to Google search. Yeah, and, and all these NLP, AI, ML, this particular thing which I mentioned, all the chatbot engine will be implementing and they may have their strengths and weaknesses. Right? So you can say that one chatbot engine is particularly working well for medical industry. Why that is working for medical industry? Because they have mastered the algorithm of AI ML for that particular industry. So it's not that all chatbot engines will start behaving similarly. They may have strengths and weaknesses. The same as your machine translation engines. Right? Uh, your Microsoft also does it. The SDL also does it. But they have their own strengths and weaknesses for machine translation. So any of these machine intelligence, you come into the picture, how they have trained, which uh, kind of content they have seen more, they will, and for a cat example, if let's say a machine is looking at the Asian cats example more, it will recognize the Asian cats very easily than probably the American cats. Right? Because it has been trained on that particular data. So machine is not intelligent, you have to make it intelligent. How you have made it intelligent, that makes a big difference. <laughs>